What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Draymond Green Show YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like the post that you love, but you can get everything the Draymond Green Show right on our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe. Check that out. Thank you. You come into the Celtics, your role has changed quite a bit offensively. Um, but in that change and offensively, me having the opportunity to play with you, um, watching you play, you don't get off on offense. Like, you're more than capable of scoring the ball at any level, which I think most people don't understand. You can take guys to the post. You are a great finisher around the rim. You have a floater. You have a mid-range. You have a three-point shot. There's guys that average far more points than you in the NBA that can't score at every level like that. And so just to be able to score like that already puts you in an elite category. However, you've taken on a lesser role knowing that JT's going to get a lot of shots, JB's going to get a lot of shots, and everything else from there is flea throwing. It's you. It's D, it's D, D, uh, D White some nights. It's Al some nights. It's Peyton some. Like, it's so free flowing outside of those two getting the shots that they're going to get every night, and your role has changed. Great. Granted, I understand that. Maybe people don't understand that. But I, I don't really want to talk about that. What I want to talk about is the role that I see you playing now on the defensive end. Because mm -hmm. you've gone from a guy who, like we were speaking about earlier, where you're going to be on Steph Curry. You're going to be on Kyrie Irving. You're going to be on the best ball handler at all times. To now, you were on me when we played y'all to start the game. And I see you playing more of a – like I used to love to do that when our lineups allowed for me to just match up with a – guy who's maybe a lesser shooter, I can I can mess up y'all offense in a totally different way than just right. having to go guard that guy. And I see y'all doing more of that now with you. How has that been for you adjusting to that role as opposed to being the the guard and the dominant ball handler all the time? It's been a it's been a different experience for sure because like you said, and especially when we first came into the league, it was like you guarded your matchup. Absolutely. If I was the point guard, I guarded the point guard. If I was the two, I guarded the two. Uh, and honestly, my first few years or whatever, like I don't ever think I guarded a, a, a three, like a small forward or whatever. It was either point guard or shooting guard. Now, and then it became like hound the ball. Best player, don't matter if they six eight, don't matter if they five ten, hound them. And those two are kind of the same though. Like I still had to hound because you know when we came in, the point guard is just the one who brings it down, sets people up, and does all that. But they didn't pretty much the main ball handler getting it to the guy in the spot where they where the guy. Yes, was. absolutely. Now it's like I think our first time we played Philly, I was guarding Joel. Like he's seven two, <laughs> I'm six four, and I. Someday, 6'5", depending on if I got my hair up right here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I think kind of like being a roamer or disrupting kind of like what you said has been so fun to me. Yeah. It's been so fun because I see the game in a different way now. I see mm -hmm. the reason why I'm on this person. Um, I'll start to catch it now. Me and Joe talk about that quite a bit. Like, I'll start to catch what Joe is thinking defensively before he tells me. I'll be like, hey, you want to do this? He'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want to do. I'm like, <laughs> see, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to catch on. Before I was just so locked into hounding the ball, disrupting it, sending them over the screen, sending them down to Brooke or Yanni. Uh, before that, send them to AD uh, when I was with the Pelicans. So it was like that was it was a consistent um, type of thing that I was doing. And now, mm -hmm. bro, one day I might be on a nine shooter. The next day I might be on a shooter. I might be on the big for if they want to come up and set a screen, but we don't want the big in it. So because I'm on him now, he's in the corner and, and now they're going with like somebody else who's maybe less of a shooter. You know what I'm saying? Like so many mm -hmm. things playing to the defense now. And I didn't see the game that way. I was always the person who had to hear people tell me what to do. Which is a scary feeling. You out yeah. there on that Island, everything's yeah. happening behind you, Yeah, but you can't turn and look. And you just have to do like you're at the mercy of whether the big wants to talk or not. For sure, a hundred percent. And then yeah, so I I learned early to let my bigs get the rebounds and and feed them the ball and stuff because then they talk. But now I'm the one screaming. 
I'm like you. I'm trying to be loud. I'm trying to be crazy. So, so like my teammates ain't getting smacked by screens, or they know what's going on in situations. And I think that that was something a little different for me because I'd always been like a quiet player because I didn't really have to say much. I was always on yeah. the ball. You know what I'm saying? So it's a it's been a cool experience. Like I guess I'm 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 like Draymond Green. <laughs> no, way better, way better. <laughs> um. <clears throat> And I, I, I include myself in this. Anytime someone talks about a defender being overrated in the NBA, I, I, I cannot recall ever seeing one person say another name outside of you. Yet, you've never finished higher than seven plays in defensive player of the year voting. What do you make of that? Because that, to me, I, I know the type of defender you are, number one, um, and playing against you and watching you play. I know the type of respect that people have for you as a defender, especially those guys that you are guarding. But what do you make of that thing? Um, I think that for the most part, the people, the players in the NBA and a lot of the coaches in the NBA see how good of a defender I am. And that's all I need. Like, I can see the respect when somebody... And when my guy is going up to set a screen and they're like, no, go to the next one. You know what I'm saying? Best like best feeling you, you in know the world. It, bro, what? <laughs> I'm like, all right, respect. Um, to me, like, that's what I need. I don't really care for the accolades. I don't care for the whatever. Would it be cool to get DPOI yet? But I think me personally, it was for one, like I was super happy when Marcus got it because it had been so mm-hmm. long since a guard had gotten it or mm-hmm. And no offense to the bigs out there that block shots, and I know that they affect the game, but like not all the time, they not guarding the best players night in and night out. They're not affecting the game in that way where they got to fight over screens or chase them around or pound them full court. Like, not saying that it's easy because I can't block shots. I'm not averaging five five blocks a game, but you would know. Like, you have to guard. You have to guard the best players. At the end of the day, you had to you. They were either trying to get away from you or you mm-hmm. would go and seek them out because you knew, like, I'm that guy. I'm 10 toe. So when Marcus got it, I was, like, so excited because I'm like, all right, well, we trending in a direction now where I feel like it could possibly go to guards and, and do all that. But me not getting it, man, I I could I could care less. Uh, I wouldn't you say got- care less. I, I wouldn't say care less, but, like, um, um, it, it, I don't lose sleep over it. You got more. You have more respect from your peers as a defender, as I wouldn't say more. You have as much respect from your peers as a defender as Steph has as a shooter, or as like from. I mean, the guys you've guarded. Like if you right. talk to the guys that you've guarded, like they don't think for a second. Like oh, Drew Holiday. Like like you ask Drew Holiday. Like no question. And that's what I, like, it's just the same way, like, obviously, Steph is the greatest shooter we've ever seen. If you ask who's the best shooter, the first, Steph Curry, like, no, not a second thought, like, Steph Curry. And guys that you've guarded, that know the game, that know what is, what they're facing when they're up against you, it's the same, it's Drew Holiday, no, no question. And I think, as you just, like, that's, that's, that's the biggest compliment one can ever get. Ever. That's that's crazy to me that like it's not even a question. It's not even a thought. Like yeah. Like when I hear people or when I hear that, like every time I hear it, bro, I'm like, yeah, that's that's insane to me. But that's yeah. that, that's a good feeling. That's a I think a part of the reason why like I I know I mean going to sleep at night, bro, I'm I'm good. All right, the NBA season is in full swing, coming down the stretch. Then we move right into the playoffs in April, May, and June. I can't wait. Spice things up with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA right now. All you have to do is put down 5 bucks and get $150 instantly in bonus bets. Pretty good trade-off. I pay 5 I get $150. North Carolina listeners, do not forget. Welcome to the party. DraftKings Sportsbook now live in your state, North Carolina. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Takes 90 seconds. The code is Colin, C-O-L-I-N. Again, 90 seconds. Download DraftKings Sportsbook app. Put in Colin. New customers bet five. Get 150 back in bonus bets instantly. 
That is the trade. All right. The code is always calling. The crown is yours. Thank you.